think I, I, it does follow on from what's been talked about, but um, probably because it's only recently that I've been diagnosed, it's only recently that the word dementia seems to define how I'm treated. And it happened, I'm, I don't want to just complain about it. I want to find out how other people deal with it in themselves when it happens, because it happened to me yesterday. Um, instead of making, instead of being seen as making a point and saying something from my own point of view, I was seen as asking for help. And I wasn't asking for help. I just wanted to make a statement and ask a question that was online and it was in a dementia <laughs> a context. Um, but what the fallout feels enormous and maybe this is because it's new for me. I feel like I've spent years trying to be understood and heard and <laughs> And I've actually become quite good at it. So this is, this is, you know, this is quite, it, it really hurts when I'm treated as if I don't know what I'm talking about or as if what I, what I must need because I've got dementia is help. And it's not always what I need. Sometimes I just need to say something. Welcome to the world know. of stigma. <laughs> Yeah, it takes me, it's taken me a day to get over what happened in a few seconds. And that may mean that I'm just not dealing with it very well. Do I have to get used to it? Or do I, how do you deal with it in yourself when that's happening and not feel rubbish? <laughs> I feel like a little child. Yeah. I feel like I'm a, I'm a baby and they're the adult. And I don't know why, but I begin to talk like a child. And mm. then I begin to act like a child. And I think, what am I doing? Why am I talking like this? But the way they treat me, I don't know, makes me like a kid. No, yeah. like a baby. Yeah. Before dementia, I was always quite a pushy, bullshy, um, in the professional circumstances, and I would always get heard. I would make sure I got heard, and and I believed I was the most important in the room, and and, and deserved to be treated that way. Mm. With dementia to start with, and I think I have spoken about this maybe at one of the specials or something. But in the early stages of dementia, I was so self intimidated by the fact that now I'd got this dementia and this diagnosis, I became. A mouse. I, even I was doubting whether I had the right or or, or the capability to, to have sensible thoughts and 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 be a, a, a an active and equal or even leading part of a conversation. Um, eventually, so I got I allowed myself to get kind of pushed down, pushed away or even even pushed out at times but eventually the dementia started magnifying the original and for real me and I started getting a lot more forceful and noisy and in your face and up front but a certain other young lady here that's in in, in Medway kind of took me over, over time that winding people up isn't always the best way to get what you want you've got to try and be a bit nicer so for a long, long time, I have fought and tried and learned to be nicer and better and quieter and take my turn and blah, 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 blah. Um, there does also seem to be a drawback on that in that there is an element of if you don't get pu get pushy, if you don't stand up for yourself, if you don't sort of say, it, look, I'm here, you can quite easily get overlooked and pushed away so Maxine you've got quite a battle in finding the right level the right ground that's just for you but it's vital vital that you do because what, what makes this so special and deep so special and what we've all been doing for years and years especially James here in Scotland and changing 
where people sit at a different point of view of conferences and dementia throughout the world, we, we now get more and more towards the front. It, it's important that our voice is heard because if you ever stop being heard, things will get even, even worse. It's when we are marginalized, disregarded, disrespected, treated badly, treated as though our personhood doesn't exist and treated as though we're a, a diagnosis instead of a person. Um, there's something that kind of gets re-evoked, I think, from childhood, and that's what Jackie talked about, um, that when we're small children, we, we don't have very much information, we don't have very much context and, and we don't have very much to go on generally about who we are and, and, and what we're worth. Some people treat children as very precious human beings to be nurtured and uh, cherished. And some people treat children very, very badly and abuse them, neglect them and hurt them. And children can't distinguish because they lack that context they lack allies and they lack uh, uh, perspective and and so children tend to react almost immediately when they're being treated badly and and they they re kind of regress to an earlier stage of development which is why children cry so much because we regress to being babies when we're when children are being tr treated poorly and that often happens that when we are adults and even very mature adults and very experienced adults and have been making our way in the world and learning to get along and and being reasonably successful but when stigma is targeted at us or we are being targeted and treated with stigma and stereotype uh, it's hardly surprising that because it's sufficiently similar to what it's like to be a small child that mm -hmm. we regress to that early stage of development where uh, dramatizing is often what would get us a result. It, it, dramatizing would often get us some kind of attention. And frequently it was the wrong kind of attention. I used to get a clip around the ear roll, uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, or a slap across the legs. Uh, and, um, and at school, when because I was at school at a time going back into the 1950s where it was quite okay to hit kids and... Um, and I used to get the cane. I used to get the cane routinely. <laughs> they thought they were trying to beat some common sense into me, but it didn't work. And so that uh, being hit is very tra traumatic and stigma hits me in the same place that I respond uh, as though I've been traumatized. And mm. what Maxine was describing, I think, what I heard when she was describing how it felt, it feels bloody horrible and very very confusing and mm -hmm. even if you are a, a successful communicator and even if you've learned how to get along uh, and and handle most things that the world throws at us stigma and stereotyping um, knocks all of us back and we've all been in that place and I can remember when when I first met Steve and Rachel and Philly a long long time ago I used to flip into a rant I'd go into a rant and I would not treat people kindly who were not treating me kindly, even if it was just uh, um, even if it was just uh, a simple thing like not being treated considerately on the bus in a restaurant in a cafe uh, uh, or, or, or at a conference. I'd go ballistic because yeah. it it all that anger from earlier. Yeah. Uh, would get itself those completely inappropriate feelings would get themselves attached mm. to something sufficiently yeah. similar in the present moment yeah. and i'd blow off i'm 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 calming down a bit now i'm going to keep drinking the bath water i think that's what's doing it for me but uh, or taking the tablets or something but i am calming down a little bit but um when when i first got diagnosed and then and then misdiagnosed and then re-diagnosed and then told I didn't have it at all uh, and then told that I was wasting people's time mm. oh mm. I, I 
at first I wanted to just run away and hide and then I just wanted to, I would have clear I would have cheerfully shot most of the professionals that I had something to do with and strangled the rest for good measure because um, it, I got a lot of it from professionals that pro stigma mm. and stereotype is rampant in the world of pro professional caring professions allied health professions nurses doctors they don't treat us very well they they treat us as though well there's nothing we can do for you uh so you just better suck it up and get on with it uh, mm -hmm. and if you make a lot of noise then we'll treat you as a nuisance and and if you do blow off we'll treat you as aggressive and then we'll refuse to see you mm -hmm. uh, it's it's awful stigma and stereotype uh, it should be banned by law 